What is going on guys, it is Panjano here and today I'm going to bring you guys the ultimate FPS increase guide for Ring of Elysium. This video is going to be aiming to give you guys the best possible FPS you can achieve with inside of the game, regardless of your system specs, whether you're running on a high-end system, all the way down to an ultra low-end, old potato PC. Everyone watching this video can tailor the configs with inside of here to adjust it for the best performance and decent visual quality, or to just go completely performance-centric for the best FPS possible. There's tons of customization and everyone watching should be finding satisfying results with inside of this video. So if you guys do enjoy this video and are happy with the results, please do leave a like on the video as it will help me out tremendously. If you guys can also leave your results, questions, queries and suggestions for other games and content in which you wish to see me cover on this channel, please do so in the comment section down below. And if you do enjoy content like this and wish to stay up to date with the latest videos coming to this channel, please do consider pressing that subscription button alongside the bell notification to be notified instantly whenever I upload. With all that being said and done, let's get straight into the video to keep this as fast and as informative as possible. So starting off with inside of this video, what we're going to be doing is downloading the FPS increase pack provided in the description down below. Below. This is just a small simple pack in which I've compiled so you guys can follow along with this video simply. So head into the description down below, try out the first link. If for some reason the first link doesn't work or you're having trouble downloading it, try out the second link, find whichever one works best for you. Once you guys have downloaded the file, put it onto your desktop and the file should be called ROE FPS Pack by Panj. The logo for this file might look different for your PC, but that's absolutely fine. To open up this file, you'll need a program called 7-Zip or WinRAR. Most of you guys out there watching this video by now will already have one of these programs installed, but if you don't, simply navigate over to Google, Google search one of the programs, come back to this video and continue on. At this point, what you're gonna do is go over to the FPS Increase Pack provided, right click and select the Extract Here option. Once you guys have done that, you'll then be given a folder on your desktop with an identical name. The folders and files found within inside of this folder will be going through throughout this video to ensure that we're getting the best results possible. You can pick and choose between which of these steps you actually follow along with, but for the best and most effective results, I recommend following them with this video as closely as possible and doing all of the optimizations shown. So for the first optimization, what we're going to be doing is actually installing our optimized game config so we can ensure that we have a decent game platform to build upon with our further optimizations. To do this, what we're going to be doing is navigating into Steam and going over to Ring of Elysium, right clicking on Ring of Elysium and selecting properties. Once you're inside of the properties tab to start off what we can do is we can actually disable the steam overlay whilst in game unless you use it to invite people. We're then also going to be navigating down to the bottom which is going to be the steam input per game setting and selecting this to forced off. With inside of here what we're now going to be doing is navigating up to the top to local files and then selecting browse local files. This will then open up the game installation directory of Ring of Elysium. What we're going to be doing is navigating over to the user data folder and double clicking and with inside of here you should be seeing a few config files. What we're going to be doing is dragging this over to the right hand side navigating into the FPS increase pack provided, dragging the FPS increase pack to the left hand side and navigating inside of the config folder. With inside of here you'll find an EU system settings config current and what you're going to be doing is simply dragging this file found with inside of the FPS increase pack into your game directory moving it over there and replacing the file with inside of this destination. Once you guys have done that, you've now successfully installed the optimized config file. We can then go ahead and exit out of both of the folders and continue on with the optimizations. Proceeding to continue on with the optimizations, we can now apply some fixes to the game applications itself to ensure that we're running to the best of its ability with inside of Windows. To this, we're gonna be navigating inside of Steam, right clicking on Ring of Elysium once again, going into properties, once again going over to local files, selecting browse local files and going back inside of the game installation directory. This time what we're going to be doing is navigating inside of that directory and scrolling down until we find the Europa underscore client. Once you guys have found this file, simply go ahead and right click on it, go down to properties. We're then going to navigate into the compatibility tab and we're going to select the option for disable full screen optimizations. We're also going to check the option for change high DPI settings and override the high DPI scaling behavior performed by checking that option, pressing OK, pressing apply, OK, and we can now proceed to apply that fix for all other application files found with inside of here. Proceeding on from there, what we can now go ahead and do is actually apply a custom optimization with inside of the FPS increase pack to change the priority mode in which the game actually boots in, allowing Windows to run the game at high priority mode pretty much all the time, stopping you guys having to manually tab out and actually set the game to high priority. It's very easy and simple to do. What you guys can go ahead and do is navigate into the FPS increase pack provided once again, this time going inside of the optimizations folder. With inside of here, we're then going to be going into the ROE process priority folder. And with inside of here, you'll find three files. You'll find ROE above normal priority, high priority and normal priority. Selecting any of these keys will set the priority mode found with inside of the name with inside of Windows. So if you select normal priority, the game will run in normal priority mode with inside of Windows. High, it will run in high, and above normal will run in above normal. For the best results possible, I recommend going ahead and selecting the ROE high priority key, as this will give you guys the best balance of performance and should help eliminate any micro stuttering you might be experiencing. So go ahead and double click on this key. You'll then be notified that changes will be made, just select yes, and then it will notify you that the changes have successfully been made and just press okay. Once you guys have done that, you can then go ahead and exit out of this folder and the optimization is complete. 
So to start off, what we're going to be doing is navigating to the bottom left-hand side and searching for power plan. Once you guys have typed that in, simply go ahead and find any of the logos that look similar to this with the battery with a cord going around it. Ignore what the option says, just find this logo and click on one of the options. With inside of here, we're then going to go to the directory found here at the top and select where it says power options. With inside of here, go to show additional power plans and you should be seeing balanced, high performance and power saver. For any of you guys running on Windows 10 watching this video, you can actually enable the ultimate performance power plan by following the video on the top right hand side of the screen now. Click on the card, it will take you to the video, it's only a couple of minutes long and it's definitely worthwhile doing for anyone running on Windows 10. You can also find the video linked in the description down below. I'd recommend taking a few moments to just follow that video as the performance gains from following it are absolutely phenomenal and in most cases it can solve so many issues with performance. For any of you guys not running on Windows 10 or if you don't wish to follow that power plan and you just wish to use what your PC already has installed to it, you guys can go ahead and select the high performance power plan. So make your decision now if you're going to be going with ultimate or high. I'm personally going to be going with high performance. So select the power plan. Once you guys have selected it, just simply highlight it like so. And you can then go ahead and actually exit out of this folder as that optimization has now been completed. We can now go ahead and further develop that power plan to ensure that we're getting the best results with inside of Windows as possible towards any power hungry tasks such as web browsing via Google Chrome, playing games, using Photoshop or video editing, and just getting the most out of the performance of our PC. So starting off with the most basic of the optimizations with inside of here for the power plan, what we're going to be doing is navigating into the FPS increase pack provided, going inside of the optimizations folder, and we can start off by going over to CPU core parking setup version 2140 and double clicking. For a brief explanation as to what this program does, you can look in the bottom hand of the screen right now, but do know that this is one of the most highly recommended optimizations in which I recommend to people, regardless of operating system, system specs, or if you're on a desktop or a laptop. This program works phenomenally well and I guarantee you should be seeing good results on most games that you play. What we're going to be doing is selecting next, accept the terms of the license agreement, select next, next and install. Once the program has been installed, simply make sure that the launch option has been selected and press finish. Once the program has opened up, it should look very similar to mine, but the numbers and options might be slightly different and that's completely okay. To start off with inside of here, what we're going to be doing is going over to power data plan. Selecting the drop down menu with inside of here, we're going to be matching this to the power data plan we set with inside of Windows around about two steps ago. So for you guys who went with high performance, select high performance. If you went with ultimate, select ultimate performance and just make sure that this matches the power plan you set with inside of Windows. Once you guys have done that, we're then going to navigate down to core parking index, dragging the slider and dragging it up to 100%, allowing you guys 100% access to all of your CPU cores. We're then going to go over to frequency scaling index, which is going to be the speed of those cores, and again, dragging this up to 100%. And for some of you guys watching this video, some of you might not have this option, but if you do, also go down to turbo boost index and again, drag this up to 100%. Once you guys have got all of those options changed, simply then go ahead and press the apply button, press OK, and what we can now go ahead and do is exit out of the program as that is completely done and that optimization has been applied. For another extremely quick optimization which we can apply to Windows is actually going to be an audio fix to help lower the CPU overhead on audio decoding. To do this is actually very simple and easy to do, simply navigate to the bottom right hand side, right click and select volume mixer. With inside of here, simply then go ahead and click on the speaker icon, and on the left hand side of your screen, your speaker property should then open up. We're going to be navigating over to enhancements at the top, and making sure that we select the box for disable all sound effects. Once that's been selected, go ahead and press the apply button. We can then proceed to go over to the advanced tab found here at the top, and go into the drop down menu for default format. With inside of here, we're going to be selecting 16 bit 44,100Hz CD quality. Don't go any higher, don't go any lower, this is the sweet spot. Select that. Once that's been selected, go ahead and again press apply press OK, and we can then exit out and those changes have been applied. For some more incredibly important fixes for the Windows Power Options themselves, to ensure that we are further optimizing our Windows Power Plan for the best performance for power applications, what we can actually go ahead and do is navigate into the bottom left hand side and type in Reg Edit, just like so. Once you got it typed out, simply then go ahead and press Enter. The Registry Editor for Windows will then open up. This can look quite intimidating, but do know this is completely safe to do. Just take your time, follow along with this carefully, and just clearly watch what I'm doing on screen, and you'll be absolutely fine. We're going to start off by going into H key Local Machine. We're then going to proceed to go down to the Software folder and double click. Once we're inside of Software, we're then going to be scrolling all the way down to the M section, and we're going to be looking for Microsoft. Double click in Microsoft. With inside of here, we're then going to scroll all the way down to the W section and find the folder for Windows NT. Double click on Windows NT double click on current version and with inside of current version we're then going to scroll down to the M section once again and find multimedia. Double click on multimedia, we're then going to find the folder for system profile, simply click on system profile once. Once you guys have done that we're then going to navigate to the right hand side and you'll typically be seeing network throttling index with inside of here. Some of you guys might be seeing system responsiveness. If you don't, that's absolutely fine as we can create this key anyway. So for you guys who do see system responsiveness already, double click on the option and set the value data to one. Once that's then set, go ahead and press okay. For any of you guys who don't see system responsiveness with inside of here, what we're gonna be doing is right clicking on the blank space, selecting new DWORD 32-bit value. And we're gonna be calling it system responsiveness 
just like so. You can copy and paste this from the description down below in case you're worried about any spelling mistakes. Paste it in and then press enter. Once you guys have done that, double click on the option, select the value data, set it to one, press OK, and we're now good to go. We can then proceed to go back over to the left hand side, this time double clicking on system profile, going inside of tasks, then going down to the games folder. With inside of here, we're then gonna be changing four options and which are listed down below. We're gonna start off by going into GPU priority and setting the value data with inside of here to eight and pressing OK. Then going down to priority, setting the value data with inside of here to six and pressing OK. Then going into scheduling category and setting the value data to high. It will typically already be set to medium, but we're gonna be setting it to high, which is HIGH, press OK. And then finally, SFIO priority, double clicking and also setting this to high pressing OK, and those optimizations have now been completed. We can now go ahead and exit out of the registry editor, as those will automatically be applied straight away. Once you guys have booted into the game, what we're going to be doing is now getting into the bottom left-hand side and going to our settings icon. With the side of here, we're going to start by going over to the video settings. Now on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll be seeing the recommended option through everything in which we're going to be going through, depending on your system specs. So to start off with inside of here, what we're going to be doing is going over to monitor mode. You should always be selecting full screen with inside of here for the best FPS possible, as it does not run with inside of the windowed exclusive mode if you do not do this. So for the best performance, always select full screen regardless of your system specs and operating system. With inside of here, we're then going to be going down to resolution, and with inside of here, on the left hand side of the screen, you'll be seeing a recommended resolution depending on your system specs in which you should set with inside of this option. So follow the guide on the left hand side of the screen and set your resolution according to your system specs. We're then going to go down to vSync. Make sure that vSync has been exited out to make sure that it's not on, as it's just going to introduce input lag and unnecessary FPS drops, and it will also cap your FPS. We're then going to be navigating down to graphics quality. On the left hand side, you'll see the recommended graphics quality for your system specs, but for the best FPS on any machine, you'll always want to go with low. For any of you guys looking to get the very best in FPS, regardless of your system specs, even if you guys are on a high-end gaming PC like the one I'm recording on right now, always select the lowest options available for the best performance possible. You can come in here and further personalize these and switch them around if you wish to do so, if you want to find a good fine balance, but that is going to be personal preference and it's up to you to find that. So for the best results possible, always go with low, otherwise follow the left-hand side of the screen if you wish to bump these up slightly higher. Anti-aliasing quality, I'd always recommend setting this to the lowest value possible on every single game, as it will not only introduce input lag, but also lower FPS in most cases. Rendering style, I'd recommend going ahead and selecting vibrant, as this will give you guys the best FPS possible. I'd also recommend coming down to auto record highlights and if the option is checked make sure that you disable that. Once you guys got all of that set go ahead and press apply. Once you guys have done that we're then going to navigate down to the audio tab found here on the left hand side by clicking on the speaker icon. The only option we're going to be changing with inside of here is going to be enable HRTF. If you guys are running on lower end systems or if you're experiencing micro stutter or you wish to try and boost your FPS I'd recommend coming in here and making sure that the option is deselected like so. Some of you guys might not notice any difference from turning this off whatsoever, but for some of you guys this can fix a lot of the FPS issues and stuttering with inside of the game. Once you guys have got that selected again, press apply. Now before continuing on with the following GPU optimizations, make sure that you are running on the latest graphics card driver. If that means that you have to install it and restart your PC and come back to this video, do so as it will be worthwhile doing that. So once you guys have booted back up and you're on the latest GPU driver, we can navigate back into the FPS pack provided, this time going inside of the optimizations folder, and you'll be able to go inside of the GPU settings folder and you'll be able to find the ultimate settings for either the AMD Radeon control panel found on your desktop or the Nvidia control panel. It's highly recommended that you go ahead and follow those screenshots. It's very simple and easy to follow and it's completely unnecessary for me to show you how to do this with inside of the video as the screenshots are very clearly laid out and it's very simple and easy to apply those optimizations so it would just be wasting time. Just go inside of the GPU settings folder and you'll be good to go. For you guys running on Nvidia graphics cards, you can also go inside of the Nvidia profile inspector tool by double clicking. Once the tool opens up, what we can actually go ahead and do is go down to the number two utility under sync and refresh and find the option for frame rate limiter mode. Double click on the option to make it editable. Go to the drop down menu with inside of it and select the option for 0x004 PS frame rate limiter 2 delay control flip by flip metering. Select this option found here. You can't go wrong as long as it says number 4. Go ahead and press apply. We can actually exit out the profile inspector as that optimization has been applied. Now you're probably wondering what that optimization has done. It's basically lowered the amount of input lag and latency between your graphics card and the graphics card driver. You'll typically find yourself getting a lot better FPS in most games, especially games in which you usually get higher FPS in anyway. 
And last but not least, for any of you guys looking to get the very most out of your system performance, there's going to be a link to my ultimate GPU overclocking guide in the description down below and on the screen now. This video has recently reached over the 1 million views mark, the feedback has been absolutely phenomenal, and the dislike to like ratio is absolutely spectacular. It caters to everyone from hardcore overclockers to beginners, shows you guys how to get the safest and easiest and most effective results possible, helping you guys get educated on overclocking and how to get the very most performance out of your graphics cards, because it's completely safe, easy and free to do. It will not void warranty, it's quite fun to do and you'll get educated on GPU overclocking and how to really squeeze every ounce of performance out of the products in which you've paid for. So if you do have a few moments spare, I'd highly recommend taking yourself in the description down below or clicking on the card on the top right hand side and following that video. So before we go ahead and actually apply the last and final optimizations and actually boot into the game, what I'd recommend doing is actually applying a quick system restart to ensure that everything has been applied properly with inside of Windows and we're good to go. To do this I'd recommend going to the bottom left hand side, right clicking on the power option and selecting the restart option. Booting back into this video, logging into Steam and getting ready to continue you on with the last and final step. For the last and final step with inside of this video, what we're going to be doing is navigating into the FPS increase pack provided once again, this time going inside of the optimizations folder and dragging the time resolution application found here onto the desktop. For an explanation and demonstration as to how this program works and what it does, what the program will do is it will allow you guys to lower the amount of latency and input lag between the hardware you have installed to your system, like your graphics cards, the operating system itself, and the game application. Ensuring that the software and hardware are talking to each other at a much more increased rate and a much more optimized rate, this translates to better FPS with inside of the game, lower frame times, so this also means that your game feels a lot more snappier and responsive, and just more smooth and enjoyable to play. I use this program for absolutely every single game I play, regardless of the performance on it, regardless of how demanding the game is, I always have this program running as it's completely safe, free, lightweight, and highly recommended to use. So to use the program, what you'll do is you'll actually go ahead and boot into the program, select the maximum button like so, you'll then minimize the program, but make sure the program's still running. At this point, you'll go ahead and boot into any game you wish to play. In this case, we're gonna be playing Ring of Elysium. Play it for however long you wish to do so. Once you're done playing and you've closed out of the game, you'll bring the program back up, select default, and exit out of the program until you go and play your next game. And it's just that simple and easy to use. So seeing that we're now completely done with all the optimizations with inside of this video, there's one last thing left to do, and that's to boot into time resolution, select maximum, minimize the program, head into Steam, find Ring of Elysium, and hit play. And there you guys have it, my ultimate FPS increase guide for Ring of Elysium. As always guys, if you guys have any other tips and tricks on boosting FPS, make sure that you do let me know and get a discussion going on in that comment section down below. If you guys are happy with this video and are happy with the results in which you've achieved, please do consider pressing that like button as it helps me out tremendously, alongside leaving any comments, questions, queries, and suggestions for other content in the comment section down below, as it is always fantastic to hear from you guys. And if you guys do enjoy content like this, please again, consider pressing that subscription button and the bell notification to be notified instantly whenever I upload. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video. Hopefully the results have been worthwhile and you've enjoyed watching this video. I've been Pangino and I'm out.